Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 7th of February. And we'll be able to extend up beyond that with the Senate GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. So that gets us uh, when to the second half of February. I'll get time back for you in a moment. <laughs> Just to say that first. The video is saying what 6 a.m. upload. We've also released weekend forecast and uh, also the first season one roundup for spring 2023. So please check out those free videos if you would like to uh, do that. Like, share and subscribe on the videos. Thank you so much everybody for getting that. Hope you're having a lovely, lovely Saturday. We did a live stream <laughs> last night. It was funny. Um, we live streamed the pub run and uh, I may have got ever so, ever so slightly <laughs> overexcited uh, with the pub run. <laughs> so uh, if you haven't seen the live stream then uh, do have a look back it's very funny when we get to uh, the pub run <laughs> right well let's start your 10 to 14 day event so we're going to begin in the strategy we've added another 10 degrees of warming since yesterday on this chart from uh, the jma so uh, yesterday we was at minus 14 the black line. Um, today we're at minus 30, so we put on another 10 degrees at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. I'm expecting this to go up another 10 degrees over the next few days, get somewhere around minus 20. Might go a little bit higher than that. So it's going to be looking quite dramatic on this um, chart, even though this stratospheric warming isn't a sudden stratospheric warming. It's not going to send the zone of wind into reverse and uh, whatnot. It's uh, still a significant warming of the stratosphere that's taking place there. A little bit lower down in the uh, stratosphere, going closer to the top of the sphere at uh, 10, uh, 30 HPA. Um, warming is continuing there as well. We are now close to minus 50 with the black line. We'll see how much further up that goes. Of course, we're without the uh, charts from the University of Berlin uh, this year. <coughs> Excuse me. There we used to be able to see the um, the uh, forecast for 30 HPA as well as 10 HPA. So uh, we used to get an idea of what was going on lower down. But unfortunately, they're not updating uh, those uh, strat uh, analysis charts uh, this winter. I'm not sure why. Um, but uh, so we're without that. You know, we're, 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 we're without um, the uh, University of Berlin uh, this winter, sadly. Um, but we'll just wait and see uh, how far up this black line goes at 30 HPA2. Latest a couple of GFS runs look like this in terms of the forecast. So the warming continues over Siberia. That's where the core of the warmth is penetrating into the North Pole with those uh, yellow and green colours. Now, over the next few days, that warming is maintained over Siberia and continues over the North Pole uh, as well. As heading to early part of February, the uh, PV, Stratospheric Polar Vortex, with these blue colours, has a go at getting back into uh, the North Pole, but to generally displace again away from the pole by this uh, sort of third or is it fourth warming, um, keeping the blue curves at bay over the North Atlantic and into northern parts of Europe as well. Uh, as we go into the same range with this GFS run, uh, we look like that. So increasing size that the uh, stratospheric polar vortex might be heading off in towards um, northwestern parts of Russia, for example, there, moving out of the Atlantic towards northwestern uh, parts of Russia. So the displacement event continues. Again, no sign of a split of a PV there up to the middle of February, and uh, no sign of a reversal of zone winds either. The GFS 6 then. Um, Again, is all much of a muchness uh, with these uh, with this continued warming of the uh, stratosphere at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. That's how it finishes up on the 13th of February. This is the zone of wind forecast from uh, weather is cool. Let's get rid of some of the lines. So um, we have had a weakening of zone winds. Uh, look how the zone winds has uh, weakened from very strong level. It was out so like a week or so ago. Now weaker than average, um, although not a reversal. To get a reversal of zone wind, we would have, we would have, have to have gone down uh, to that line. So um, we're short of a reversal, but have had a weakening. Uh, the zone wind is going to bounce back over the... 
coming week or so from uh, this very week level. So it's about as weak as it's going to get. It's going to bounce back to around there by the uh, beginning of February. For GFS ensembles of right. We have got a few of those ensemble members now starting to weaken as well wind again as we go into the middle part of February. So maybe we might get another bite of a cherry into the middle or second half of February. We have to wait and see about that. But it generally looks like the wind is going to re-strengthen through the first half of February. That's happening because we're only getting a displacement event of the polar vortex rather than, you know, uh, a proper split of the uh, PV. So it's a very significant warning, this, but it is sure of, uh, uh, of like, a sudden stratospheric warning about sensor zone of wind into reverse, splits the PV, and it gets a big troposphere response via blocking. But we'll keep looking. Central temperature is currently sitting at 5.1, which is 1.3 degrees uh, above average. That's provisional to the 27th of January. These are the GFS upper air temperature amplification ensembles. Next complete on the Ipswich today. Red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average. Or Ipswich being rather zonal. Start off with, with, with uh, these warmer and cooler sets of day two. A bit of a cold snap there through the uh, middle part of next week, maybe. And uh, then we go milder into the second half of next week. That's just a big ridge is building up from uh, the south. So it will be mostly dry in that area. Of high pressure to mild, and then for the second week of February, we like we generally keep things quite mild. Although there are some colder outliers uh, down here, so we can't completely discount those. And the upper air temperatures, as this will be anticyclonic, the upper air temperatures don't tell you everything that could be going on on the surface. So on the surface, it could be cold, and more about that in a second. Precipitation-wise, there's going to be lots of dry weather over the uh, next week, 10 days. That idea of a very stormy start to February um, went out the window pretty quickly, didn't it? And even into the second week of February, actually doesn't look overly wet. So it does look as though we will keep an anti-cyclonic signal through the first half of February a lot of the time. Temperature anomalies from the 28th of January to the 5th of February, looking milder than average. Precipitation anomalies from the 28th of January to the 5th of February, drier than normal. Notice we from that from uh, nodschool.net shows that high pressure is sitting just our south and southwest, uh, with uh, west southwest winds to our uh, north, so that's where the area of high pressure is centered and it's sending a ridge in across the country. It's quite a cloudy ridge, mate. Right, let's go to the chart day today. It's how late you can make your road to midnight on Tuesday, wet, windy in the north, main drive down in the south. Um, bit of a cold north, westy northerly through the middle part of next week. That's first of February, doesn't last for long. High pressure gradually trying to build up from the south as we go into next weekend, bringing lots of dry weather to the south, more unsettled still in the north. That's very mild, by the way. Winds pushing up from a southwesterly direction. Icon looks like that again. We get that little bit of a colder northwest sea for Wednesday, but uh, soon back to, back in wind into a southwest Thursday, Friday, and then into the weekend. High pressure sea just to our southwest with lots of dry weather to England, where it might be a little bit of fog um, with that, which would limit the temperature. But overall, that's a very mild air mass. Winds coming up from the Azores around the top of that area of high pressure. So looking properly mild there for uh, next weekend. GFS midnight run is uh, much of a much this. However, it's a little bit stronger with that area of high pressure. So notice that by next weekend, the area of high pressure is actually quite centrally located uh, across the country. Less influence from the Atlantic. The I mean, lows out in the Atlantic are less. Um, now, that has a prospect of a little bit of fog, or a little bit more fog, I think, for England and Wales, anyway, close to that area of high pressure, which could limit the temperature potential. Meanwhile, meanwhile further north, though, uh, showery dishes coming in from off the Atlantic. Up to day 10, high pressure then starts ridging up towards Scandinavia. We have a go at pulling in an easterly wind. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> That's what got me very excited on the uh, live stream last night. Um, no, yeah, we try to get Scandinavian high go, but it doesn't come off. The Atlantic is too strong to allow that. And uh, and so we just keep it generally mild and turn more unsettled there. The GFS midnight run for the second week of uh, February. This is how GFS 6 said it's uh, looking. Uh, again, a little bit of a northwesterly through the middle part of next week, and then high pressure is in. Uh, by next weekend. Again, notice high pressure is further north compared to like the UK Met and ICOM. So, with high pressure, particularly centred over England and Wales, there is a better prospect uh, or risk, even perhaps, of uh, more in way of fog, I think, with that. Meanwhile, for Scotland and Northern Ireland, that is a very mild scenario with winds in from the southwest. It's how far north we can get to so high pressure as to whether we will start 
have to start thinking about inversion and whatnot. Eventually, by day 10, that high pressure begins to slip towards Germany, we begin to pull in a continental flow. So, by that point, this is when it's in February, I think we will probably be thinking a little bit about um, inversions coming in from off the continent with, with cold continental air. Now, uh, beyond day 10, high pressure then uh, re-establishes more to the northwest of Scotland. We begin to pull in uh, quite a cold northeast. You may be getting an intense area of high pressure sat right over top of the country there on Thursday night for the at 1,055 millibars. That could almost be a record breaker. And uh, we do start pulling in some quite cold air out of Scandinavia, actually. Maybe in risk of some snow showers around some of those eastern coastal areas um there most of that cold air gets shunted away to our south and east but we, and we stick under the area of high pressure but under that high pressure it is very cold on the surface because i have a dew points look um so uh, you know a bit of a freeze up taking place actually across most parts of europe and we are kind of included in that actually with that area of high pressure so um don't very cold and frosty for the second week of february with about high pressure i suspect that's an outlier so i would suspect on the ensemble graph i can probably go back to it. on the ensemble graph i would suspect if you look at two meter temperatures uh we might find that that is a bit of an outlier <coughs> excuse me um oh, not overly actually is it not overly uh, it doesn't look that dramatic for Ips, which I would have thought would be more dramatic than that around here. I suppose it's at the colder side of, of the range. Yeah, it's a little bit under the ensemble of me, it's in the white line. Um, but I think a lot of those ensemble members might actually be turning quite chilly looking at that through the second week of... Um, the second week of uh, February. So that's quite interesting, actually. Maybe maybe that is uh, reasonably well supportive, that idea of uh, turning frosty under the high pressure. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you uh, like, share, and subscribe. Actually, show you everybody for doing that. We need to put on around 50 subscribers, um, get to 15.5k. Uh, so please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing this uh, for us. Right, GM, once more, with uh, a bit of a northwest sea on Wednesday and high pressure reaching in to the south anyway through uh, the end of week into weekend. The north stays under the Atlantic influence to some degree. That could bring some fog down in the south, but it's generally a mild area of high pressure. But by the time we get through to day 10, high pressure still is more or less in control of the weather. Uh, the low pressure is being kept away from us out to the north and to the northwest. And uh, then the ECM WF looks like that. Northwest winds for Wednesday. Then high pressure bridging into the south at the end of the week into weekend. It's a mild bridge, but might bring some fog and chilly uh, days if the fog lingers down in the south. Otherwise, it's pretty mild next weekend. Um, uh, heading beyond that, so uh, certainly no sign of things getting cold under high pressure. Actually, we bring in, a, bring in an Atlantic flow around days 9 and 10. So, um, quite a cold westerly begins to set up, actually, with that by uh, day 10, but it is very uh, zonal. This is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. So, what precipitation areas is most in the north over the next week, just drifts and droughts getting into south. By Wednesday, cold enough shower turn wintry up in the north for a while, but then they'll fade out, <coughs> excuse me, and things will go milder at the end of the week. And into the weekend under the ridge. And then we're into wet and windy weather by day 10. With cold westerly bringing wintry showers into the north. Uh, following that band of rain. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. From ECMDF.INT gets us to the 7th of February. 18 members of the ECM ensembles have a low pressure out to west. High pressure is to the east. That's going to be mild, bringing up southwesty winds and most unsettled in the west. Then we have got 17 just here, I would assume, including the uh, operation run that has deep or low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. So that's much flatter, much more unsettled. And uh, then we've got 16 just here that have high pressure ridging through to the east of the country and to the north. So that's almost bringing in some quite cold air uh, from the east. Certainly bringing in chilly, I would have thought, from off the continent with that one with risk of frost and fog in two weeks' time. These are the options that we've got. It's just 12th of February, 28 members of the ECM on times with high pressure to our east and low pressure to the west. That looks quite unsettled and pretty mild with winds coming up from a southwesterly direction. And then we have got 23 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure slipping away to the east, low pressure 
in from off the Atlantic, so that's uh, turning increasingly unsettled. Notice none of the options uh, suggesting a Scandinavian high today. We have had that within the ECM ensembles on one or two of the GFS operational runs. There's no suggestion of a Scandinavian high with those clusters from the ECM today. So it looks like that chance of Scandinavian high and a proper easterly sometime around the second week to the middle of February is reduced today. Not saying it's going to ha it, it won't happen, but it looks like the chance is reduced today, certainly within the ECM ensembles. CFS so BTU finally, and then we're done, means a 500 millibar height to Norris, breaking down into week periods, the first week period, potential of 28th of January to 3rd of February. The coming week will have high pressure slipping out to west with low pressure to the north, winter coming in from a westerly direction. And then we go through to uh, week two, which is the 4th to the 10th of February, with uh, low pressure still coming in from off the Atlantic. CFS still wants to turn things unsettled through uh, the early part of February. Wet, windy and mild. Week three, <laughs> it's the 11th, 17th of February, still looking unsettled. Low pressure is in with those westerly winds. And then we go through to week four, and uh, it all continues, really, it's the 18th, 24th of February with low pressure again to our west and northwest. High pressure is to our south and uh, southeast. And winds coming up from a very large southwest direction. This will, this will be an exception by February if this CFS run comes off. Um, and that looks a little bit spring like, actually, because high pressure is building up from the south there. And uh, by the second half of February, I reckon that could feel really quite, uh, quite spring like. So uh, maybe an early taste of spring as we get into the second half of February. We'll have to wait and see about that, though, of course. And we're done. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Levitz. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, just to tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to begin with 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the fourth spring update. Going to be a little bit of soda special. Uh, that one, there'll be a 10 to 14 day as well tomorrow, so uh, just keep checking back to the channel for more content for uh, today's videos, though, and for this video, that's all for now, and thanks so much.